Hi, welcome to Mojo Plays, I'm John, and today we're going over the top 10 guest characters in fighting games. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Alrighty, today we're going over the top 10 guest characters in fighting games. We're gonna play fast and loose with the definition of guest character here. Can crossover games have guests? What about ensemble casts, like in Smash Bros? Are they still a guest if they make multiple appearances? Now, I don't know the answer to these questions, but for the most part in this list, we are gonna go off of vibes. However, the number one rule that I will be following is that they must be playable. We're not counting Easter eggs or cameos. They must be legit playable guests. Stay tuned till the end of the video because, oh boy, we have a ton of honorable mentions. Starting things off with number 10, we have Rash from Battletoads, playable in Killer Instinct. Tired of being in his own notoriously difficult game, he finds a new challenge in Killer Instinct. This cold-blooded vertebrate enters the third dimension, looking cool as can be. He's rocking the surfer sunglasses, the spiked belt, and dang, Look at those teeth. Those pearly whites blind me more than the particle effects in Killer Instinct. His ability to morph his body really helps him in battle as he is able to freely transform his limbs into whatever he wants. Spiked cleats, sure. Battle axes, why not? Horns, you got it. Wanna do a Miley Cyrus impression? He's your man. He even has his hover bike so that you can relive one of the hardest levels in gaming. Finding his way into number nine, we have Lars from Tekken 6, playable in Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 2. This one was an odd one. I remember booting up this game, seeing this dude, and not even realizing he was a guest character. I just thought that I had missed a few episodes of Naruto. This collaboration was a result of Namco and Bandai merging in 2006. Apparently, Kishimoto, the creator of Naruto, is a huge Tekken fan and designed Lars's outfit himself. The outfit also shows up in Tekken, which is pretty cool. He is one of the few characters in Naruto to use a gun. Although, because it's Naruto, it doesn't shoot bullets, it shoots knives. To my knowledge, he is the only guest character to show up in a Naruto game. At number eight, we have Mega Man in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, no, not that Mega Man. That Mega Man. Yep, that's right. Instead of using the normal, smooth-looking Mega Man we all know and love, they went with this guy. Known as Bad Box Art Mega Man, he is the version of Mega Man found on the cover of the US release of the first Mega Man game. God, look at him. No thoughts, just a hollow shell of a man. Who hurt you? He's sitting at number eight because, well, let's be honest, this is a notable entry. This isn't the top 10 coolest guest characters. I just respect the devotion to the bit. Usually when a guest character is included in a game, it's their most iconic look, their best foot forward. But they went with this, and I have to respect that. Floating on in at number seven, we have SpongeBob in Brawlhalla. The master of karate, the goofy goober himself, joins the fight in a game that, let's be frank here, already has a ton of guest characters. Brawlhalla is up there with Fortnite and Super Bomberman R as being egregious with its use of guest characters. Even SpongeBob's moveset is a mirror of Rayman's moveset. Rayman. Already a guest character, a guest within a guest. Though his moveset is reused, his style sure isn't. He's suited up for battle in his trusty headgear, his iconic spatula, and even those blow up muscles from one of the best episodes of SpongeBob. Points for authenticity. Brawlhalla even lets you fight in Bikini Bottom, which to me, that isn't enough. Let me food fight in the Krusty Krab. Let me duke it out in the Goo Lagoon. Give me Glove World. Give me Rock Bottom. Go crazy, go stupid. Why not? Entering the ring at number six, we have Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII, playable and air guys, God bless the ring. Firstly, show me a harder cover to a video game. I'll wait. Airguys God Bless the Ring is a 3D arena fighter for the PS1 developed by Squaresoft, the same people behind Final Fantasy VII. Imagine squaring up in the ring, 
and you see this guy wielding a buster sword in the other corner, you're screwed. The implementation of Cloud as a guest character is pretty cool. Off the cuff, he's available in the console release. However, in the arcade cabinet version of the game, he's not unlocked until 30 days after the initial boot up of the game. We don't see that anymore. I think that's pretty neat. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. <laughs> Quenching my undying thirst at number five, we have Pepsi Man in Fighting Vipers. The protector of thirst, the provider of pop, the official mascot of Pepsi in Japan. He was created in the early 90s and makes his gaming debut in Fighting Vipers. What is more 90s than a low poly fighting game character sponsored by Pepsi? Nothing makes for a more intimidating, ruthless, and scary fighting game character than the lack of a face and a terrifying screech backed by the Pepsi Man theme song. Seriously though, all things considered, he is a very capable fighter, even using a few moves that I have definitely seen before. At number four, we have Omni-Man from Invincible, playable in Mortal Kombat 1. The brutality found in both Invincible and Mortal Kombat makes this a match made in heaven. The power, the cruelty, the mustache, perfection. J.K. Simmons reprises his role as the uptight Viltrumite, and it is a joy to see. Even including some voice lines that aren't from Invincible. Stop being so polite. Get the f out of my sight before I demolish you. Get out of my sight before I demolish you. You can tell that the devs had a lot of fun with this character. He's so authentic in every way. His moveset is ripped straight from his source material. They even include some downright savage moments from the show. Slight spoiler, one of his fatalities is the train scene from when he fought Mark and it rocks. Rolling in at number three, we have Sonic the Hedgehog in Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Tell me a more hype addition to the Smash cast than this. I can remember a time when Sonic in Smash was a mere rumor hidden deep within the code of Smash Melee, that he was just somewhere in the game and we had to find him. The rumor was false, but the hype was there. People wanted this. And after a popularity poll put on by Sakurai himself showed that he was the most desired character, it was on. Sonic joined the battle alongside Solid Snake as the first third party characters to join the Smash roster, opening the floodgates to even more characters in the future. Sonic stayed in character for the most part as he became the fastest character in the game, overtaking Captain Falcon. His moveset was annoying, but what do you expect? He has a homing attack and he is the fastest character in the game. One slight inaccuracy that I thought was pretty funny was that Sonic can swim in this game. Yep, one of his biggest weaknesses is completely ignored in Brawl. Sure, he splashes about like he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's not drowning. Dropping into our number two spot, we have Spartan 458 from Halo, playable in Dead or Alive 4. You heard me right, this is not Master Chief. He couldn't make it. It was said that including John 117 from the main Halo series would conflict with their respective storylines, like that even matters in a Dead or Alive game, but we got her, Spartan 458, otherwise known as Nicole. Having been part of the Spartan 2 program, her duty is to protect the Nassau station at all costs, not only from the Covenant, but from ninjas as well. Her moveset is awesome. The names for her commands are all nods to the Halo series and some of the most badass names I've ever read. The Brute Basher, The Grunt Punt, The Brain Demolisher. I think that one's just a regular name, but you get the point. Seriously, imagine a ringside announcer doing color commentary on one of her fights. She hits them with a rising warthog tackle into the great journey. And what's this? A pillar of autumn. Oh my God. She can also use a plasma grenade, by the way. Before we get into our number one pick, let's go over a lot of honorable mentions. Starting off with the entirety of the Soul Calibur and Mortal Kombat series. They both love guest characters and could honestly have their own top 10 lists. We also have Earthworm Jim wielding a giant club in Battle Arena Toshiden. An entire Chocobo from Final Fantasy is playable in Tobal 2 and freaking Fred Durst, AKA Limp Biscuit, appears in Fight Club. Lastly, I wanna give a huge shout out to Shovel Knight, who in the last 10 years since his debut has appeared in not one, not two, but 36 different games. 
That's MVP numbers. Respect. And at number one, we have our favorite elf, Link, from Legend of Zelda, playable in Soul Calibur 2. This marks the first and only time Link has ever appeared in a non-first party fighting game. Five-year-old me was blown away to see him in the roster. Am I biased here putting him at number one? Maybe a little, but you can't ignore how well he was implemented into this game. His entire arsenal is on display here. His boomerang, his bow, his bombs. Not only does he use the Master Sword and the Helion Shield, but you can unlock other weapons from the Legend of Zelda series, like the Megaton Hammer, the Mirror Shield, and the Great Fairy Sword. His appearance in Soul Calibur 2 is so memorable that we honestly forget that Hayashi and Spawn were guests in the PS2 and Xbox games respectively. They don't matter. <laughs> who remembers? We don't know. No, the green boy himself. That's who we remember. A fantastic game, a fantastic guest. He deserves the number one slot. Do you know any other guest characters in fighting games? Let us know down in the comments if we forgot anyone. Make sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day.